So, I promised you an online supplement that would go into a little bit more detail about that one very sticky garden path sentence that every year lots of people get stuck on. Before we begin with that particular sentence, let's review a little bit about what we know about online sentence processing already. So first of all, we know that when we encounter one word at a time, each word will reach out in some way to try and find an attachment point to higher order structural features. We also know that when we have a structure in place, just from hearing one particular word, we'll go on a fishing trip to find other words that will satisfy the nodes that have not yet been filled. If all goes well, and the words that we subsequently encounter fulfill those nodes that have yet to be filled, we have a very direct, very straightforward way of predicting the structural components of language one word at a time. So what goes wrong in garden path sentences? Here are a couple of example garden path sentences that you'll probably already be familiar with. I'll let you read them for yourself because they're often more effective when read than they are when they are spoken. And you can see that in both of these sentences, it's possible to get misdirected early on to a, a different interpretation of the words that doesn't allow all of those words to be combined together into a single sentence in the most straightforward pars possible. So here's the really sticky one. And as I mentioned before, every year about half of the people who encounter this quest, this particular example, don't unpack it immediately and don't unpack it even when they've had time. So don't worry if you don't get it at once. So for most people, this sentence goes a bit wrong. But what I'm going to try and do is provide you with a bit of context to see if there are ways that you could understand it. Uh, provided you had additional information before you read the sentence. So try out this paragraph for me. Hopefully for some of you that will have clarified the ambiguity immediately, but for any of you who are still a bit stuck, what we have to acknowledge here is that there are two whole sentences worth of information being presented at once. So we have something about a horse falling and something else that's about a horse being raced past a barn. They're coordinated in a way that could be expanded, unpacked into the horse that was raced past the barn fell to disambiguate this horse from any other possible horses. So let's look at it from an online sentence processing perspective. We start at the very beginning of the sentence. Our determiner tells us that we're in a noun phrase, which means we're expecting a noun. And the fact that we're in a noun phrase tells us that we're in a sentence, so we're still expecting a verb. We go fishing to satisfy those uh, nodes because we're waiting for words that come past to fulfill the structural requirements of uh, the sentence that we're building up. When we hear horse, we can attach that straight into the noun node. And although it's possible that we might be going to hear some more information within the noun phrase that's about that noun, it's certainly not a grammatical requirement at this stage. All we know right now is that we're waiting for a verb. So when a verb comes along, the most logical thing to do is to attach it directly into the verb phrase. So what happens next? We know that we could be getting some more information about the verb phrase. We also know it's possible that we could get some more information about the noun phrase, but that's becoming less and less likely. So when we hear a word like past, we've got two possible interpretations that we could put uh, it to. Uh, it could be an adverb or it could be a preposition. In, in each of these cases, it would be uh, fulfilling a slightly different structural requirement. When we hear the next word in the sentence, the horse raced past the, we know that we have a determiner, which means that we're in a noun phrase, we're expecting a noun. And what we know about noun phrases is that they slot very well inside prepositional phrases. So here, even before we've heard our noun, there's a high likelihood that what we're going to hear might be something that the horse has just raced past. 
So, as you can see, it's possible for us to construct at this stage in our sentence a logical attachment point for every single word that we have heard so far that gives us the sense of satisfaction that we have no dangling unfulfilled nodes that are required by the sentence. And although we have a couple of options for extra information to still be added in, neither of these are requirements. Uh, in fact, it's also possible that we could be getting further information about that noun phrase. So at this stage we commit to the prepositional interpretation of the node past. However, when we encounter the next word, fell, we know that it's a verb and that verb phrase will stretch up to try and find some structural element that it can attach to. We know that verb phrases are part of sentences, so with this analysis we might have to try and find ourselves a noun phrase that can attach into our sentence because we know that every sentence is uh, made up of a noun phrase and a verb phrase. So we may as well steal back that noun phrase we've just processed and attach it over here into our new sentence. Now we have a satisfying syntactic structure for two independent sentences, the horse race passed and the barn fell. They're not coordinated together, but they are both plausible and fulfill the structural requirements of each of those sentences. So we can separate out these two constituents, uh, knowing now that we have to reanalyze what was previously interpreted as a preposition as an adverb instead. And this is a syntactically satisfying parse, but it's not the right one. It doesn't coordinate all of these ideas into a single sentence all at once. So what else do we need to do at this stage? We've got right to the end of our sentence and we haven't found the correct structure. Well. What we're going to have to do is unpack some of the allocations that we've already made. So at this stage, we're going to have to acknowledge that the noun phrase that we tried to allocate just now is not actually a part of a secondary sentence. Instead, we're going to have to slot that noun phrase back in where we originally attached it as part of the prepositional phrase and realize that the only other sentence node that we have access to is the one right up the top, the sentence that we started right at the beginning. The matrix sentence now becomes the horse fell and all of the supplementary information could potentially find an attachment point inside at a lower level within the noun phrase. So once we recognize that this verb phrase is carrying uh, an entire sentence worth of information, if we have a look carefully at the verb raced and recognize that it could be not just a plain past, but the past participle form of a verb, which is what we get when we have a passive, then we can recognize that we're inside a relative clause that could be marked with a relativizing constituent like that. And what we actually have is a fully featured sentence, the horse that was raced past the barn fell. Now in English it's possible to delete both the relativizer and the was under certain circumstances and still make a perfectly structurally okay sentence. What we can acknowledge at this point is that one of the reasons the sentence is so sticky, so tricky, so hard to dig ourselves out of is because we committed our error very, very early in the sentence process and had several stages of successful grammatical completion before we reached the end. So this is actually a fine example of minimal attachment whereby at the point we encounter the verb we have two possible options. We can interpret it as a passive inside a relative clause or we could interpret it as a plain past, the main verb of the sentence we've only just created. Now, Frazier and Rayner's garden path model tells us that we should not create extra nodes within our phrase structure tree unless we absolutely have to. And it seems that in this case, we don't. So hopefully that has helped you to understand why it is that this particular sentence is so terribly sticky in online sentence processing terms.